Given a language L, the equivalence relation squiggle, where x squiggle y whenever x and y are indistinguishable over L, induces a set of equivalence classes. The set S, consisting of one element from each equivalence class, is a maximal pairwise distinguishable set over our language, and a finite automaton recognizing L has at least that many states, each corresponding to an equivalence class of S. Since a finite automaton recognizes language must have at least that many states, but it could require more, the important question is, can we build a minimal finite automaton using the elements of S as the states? Let's think about that. Suppose we have a finite automaton that operates on the equivalence classes of L. Then it will define a formal language where our set of states will be the set of equivalence classes. The transition function for going from one state when you encounter the symbol A to the next state, x a, we showed that that was well defined, and we'll choose to define our initial state as the equivalence class of the empty string. So what about the accepting states a prime? Well, suppose x is recognized by our language. The simplest way for L prime to recognize the same language is to make the equivalence class of X an accepting state. So let's define our accepting states as the set of equivalence classes of strings in our language. This gives us a formal language, but is it the same formal language? So remember, things that do the same thing are the same thing. While making the equivalence class of x an accepting state whenever x is in our language, we'll make sure that L prime recognizes every string L recognizes. It might recognize other things as well, which we don't want. So we need to make sure that if x is not in our language, the equivalence class of x is not one of our accepting states. So suppose x is not in our language. We want to show that the equivalence class of x is not an accepting state. So suppose it is. If the equivalence class of x is an accepting state, then it's the equivalence class for some string in our language. So this string has to be in the equivalence class. But since x and y are both in the equivalence class, x and y are indistinguishable over L. So for any string z, x, z, and y, z are either both in L or both not in L. But if we take the empty string, then y, z, y is in L, so x, z, x must also be in L, which is a contradiction. So the equivalence class of x can't be an accepting state. Consequently, x is in our language if and only if the equivalence class of x is an accepting state. And this gives us a way to construct a minimal finite automaton for our language. Find the equivalence classes for L. These are the states where our initial state is going to be the equivalence class of the empty string. Identify the accepting states. Those will be the equivalence classes where x is in our language. And we'll construct the transition function delta applied to the equivalence class when the next symbol is y is going to be the equivalence class of x, y for all y in our simple set. Well, let's try it out. Let L be the language that recognizes the strings over 0, 1 that contain 1, 1 and find a minimal lot finite automaton that recognizes L. So earlier, we found a maximal pairwise distinguishable set to be, so these will be our states, with the initial state being the equivalence class of the empty set. Now since 1, 1 is in our language, the equivalence class of 1, 1 is going to be one of our accepting states. And since neither the empty string nor 1 are in the language, then neither equivalence class can be an accepting state, and so our set of accepting states is just the equivalence class of 1, 1. Now, by our definition of delta, 
we have delta applied to the empty string if the symbol is 1 is going to be the equivalence class empty string 1 or just 1. And so in our state diagram, we can draw a transition from the equivalence class of the empty string following a 1 to the equivalence class of 1. And delta applied to empty 0 is going to be 0. But we don't have an equivalence class 0. Or do we? Remember, x is in an equivalence class if x and the class representative are indistinguishable over L. So we know that 0 can't be in the equivalence class 1, 1, since 0 followed by 1 is not in our language, but 1, 1 followed by 1 is, so an appended 1 distinguishes between them. We also know 0 is not in the equivalence class of 1, since 0 followed by 1 is not in our language, but 1 followed by 1 is, so again, an appended 1 distinguishes between them. Since the equivalence classes form a partition of our set of strings, we know that 0 must be in the equivalence class generated by the empty string. But you should prove it. But for now, we'll note that the equivalence class of 0 is the same as the equivalence class for the empty string, and so from the equivalence class of the empty string, a 0 will loop us back to the same equivalence class. Next, delta applied to the equivalence class of 1 when the symbol is 1 or 0 will be, and the equivalence class of 1, 1 is an accepting state in our language. What about the equivalence class of 1, 0? Since 1, 0 is indistinguishable from 0 and from lambda, the equivalence class of 1, 0 is the same as the equivalence class of lambda. And so in our state diagram, if we're at the equivalence class of 1, a 0 will take us to the equivalence class of the empty string. Finally, delta of 1, 1, if our symbol is 0, is the equivalence class 1, 1, 0. But since 1, 1, 0 is in our language, the equivalence class is an accepting state. But there's only one accepting state so it must be 1, 1. And by a similar argument, delta 1, 1, if the symbol is 1, is also the equivalence class 1, 1.